Tonight on Money and Politics Exclusive, the head of the world's oldest sovereign wealth fund responds to critics of the government-controlled investment pools. We have stable to the markets where we exist. So I see no basis to be worried about, about KIA in particular or about the sovereign wealth funds. In his first extended television interview, Badr al Saad also tells us where he's investing now and how he feels about the billions the fund recently invested in Citibank and Merrill Lynch. And Washington power broker Bill Marriott on how the slowdown is affecting the world's largest lodging company and his take on the presidential race. I'm very enthusiastic about John McCain. He's got good foreign policy experience. I think he needs economic experience. Those stories and more tonight on Money and Politics for Thursday, May 1st, 2008. I'm Peter Cook in Washington. Welcome to Money in Politics and thanks for watching. For months we've been reporting on the growth of sovereign wealth funds and the rising concern here in Washington and other capitals about the growing financial cloud of these government controlled investment pools. These days sovereign wealth funds have been on a shopping spree, especially here in the U.S., providing much needed capital to banks and other companies hard hit by the subprime collapse and the credit crunch. But some lawmakers in Congress worry that as their assets grow, some countries could decide to use their funds for political purposes. Badr al Saad says those fears are unfounded. He's the managing director of the world's oldest sovereign wealth fund, the Kuwait Investment Authority. It's also one of the biggest, with an estimated $250 billion in assets. Today he sat down with me for his first extended television interview ever to talk about the backlash against sovereign wealth and where he's putting Kuwait's money right now. I began by asking him what message he has for Americans who might worry about foreign government investment in the U.S. My answer is why they should fear. What have they seen about the sovereign funds or about, let's say, Kuwait that they can fear? I'll give you an example. We have been in business for more than 55 years. We have been in Europe, in the U.S., in Asia, everywhere. What have they seen that they raise these concerns? We have been investors in Daimler Benz since 1969. We haven't sold any share. We don't have even a board seat in that. Why do they share? On the contrary, we are stable to the markets where we exist. So I see no basis to be worried about, about KIA in particular or about the sovereign wealth funds. That's, that's, that's my answer. I mean, what have you seen? Can, can anybody give me an example that there is wrongdoing by, by the sovereign wealth fund or by, by KIA? This is, this is my answer. And for those Americans, there are again people in other parts of the world who say uh, that may be true of the Kuwait Investment Authority, that you have been a passive investor in, in companies here in the United States, other parts of the world, long-term investor, good for, for the financial well-being of the United States and other countries. Uh, can they trust that going forward with not only KIA but, but the other uh, sovereign wealth funds? I, I think, as I mentioned, there is no wrongdoing in the past. What makes you fear of the future? You know, you have to come with a, a concrete uh, example that really we should fear and we should worry about the investment of, of, of these funds. These funds does not leverage, does not um, speculate in the markets where they invest. So still I see there is, there is no reason to really fear. Yesterday we had a meeting in the, in the IMF building with the recipient countries. Everybody has appraised and welcomed investment by the sovereign wealth funds. So why, why, why to fear about, about the sovereign wealth funds? I was going to ask you about that. Here in Washington, you're here with other representatives of sovereign wealth funds, as yeah. well as recipient nations, yes. talking about the possibility of, of best practices for sovereign wealth funds to follow voluntarily going forward, and, and rules for recipient nations to also follow as well. Uh, do you see those talks producing best practices that, that the KIA would be willing to follow? Sure. First, we, we, I mean, all the sovereign wealth funds has, has raised a question about best practice because if we agree on best practice then we would agree that all what we have been doing for the past 55 years is not the best practice so what we what we are trying to say this is a principle of conducting business this is our principle where we conduct business that we are commercially driven it's not a politicized entities our risk management profile our governance 
decision making process within within these within these uh, bodies so this is what we are trying to explain that this is uh, this is the principles that we follow in order to conduct business and i think the imf has agree, uh, agreed on that so we, I, I think we, at the end of the day we'll come with with uh, with uh, an agreement with the imf with the recipient countries uh, represented by the oecd that this is in the best interest to uh, cooperate in order to continue our long-term presence in, in the market. Do you see any of the best practices being discussed at the IMF as being different from the way you conduct business right now? Um, what, what we mentioned, we are, as in Kuwait, that some of the points might contradict with the constitutional issues in, in, in our country. So we have to go back in order to comply these with, with our bylaws. Uh, transparency, for example, there are some calling for, for sovereign wealth funds to be more transparent, to disclose on a more regular basis their holdings. Yeah, but th this is probably, this is, this is one issue, this, let's say the size of the fund or the, the composition of the fund. I think this is, we have, we have to come an agreement whereby we can uh, come agreement not to violate the bylaws in our countries. At the same time, meet the minimum standard of, let's say, the principle that we conduct business. I, I see, honestly, I see no major issue that can uh, be an um, um, agreement breaker between, between the parties. What about uh, concerns, again, Americans may have, the United States government may have with, with sovereign wealth funds in other parts of the world? There have been concerns raised perhaps about uh, China, given its new fund, uh, the growth of, of that country and its economy, and, and perhaps concerns that maybe China might not follow the same rules that, that Kuwait does. Are those reasonable concerns for America to have? I don't think so. So far, uh, le let's say about the CIC, which is the China investment uh, body. I so far, there is nothing wrong doing. Yes, it's a young fund. It's not an old fund. But I think they need to sit together and, and talk. I think yesterday, the representative from the United States um, um, welcomed the Sovereign Wealth Fund and welcomed the investment of the Sovereign Wealth Fund. And I, I think the United States being the most transparent market, the most predictable market, the largest market, should be the model for the other world. So. I, I, I would argue that let's keep this dialogue and not, not, not to restrict any, any fund or not to fear from any, 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 any particular issue, unless there is a concrete example that this is a worry to the Americans. Yeah, there, and there have been concerns expressed here in the United States about investments in, that may pose a, a national security question. And there have been some uh, investments here that, uh, you know, the Dubai ports uh, situation here that uh, got uh, Congress yeah, but, got so involved. Uh, uh, your, your thoughts on those investments? But, 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 but let me tell you, there is a safety valve for this, which is the serious. In the, in, the, in the Treasury. So the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United yes. States, which reviewed that, that deal. It reviewed all, uh, all related issue that it, it raised the national security as an issue. So before any investment be done, this is, has been reviewed by the CFIUS, which is a committee in the, in, the, in the U.S. Treasury. And you're okay with uh, how the CFIUS conducts its business? Definitely. Definitely. I, I, this is our argument. I mean, each country has to set similar to the uh, CFIUS. And this is, will give us the comfort that there is, a, 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 there is a filtering for any investment. So we would know before we, we commit to any transaction that it has been reviewed by, by the government. Right now, of course, uh, you are investing in the United States right now. In fact, providing a lifeline to, to financial institutions, other major companies in this country that, that need investment dollars. To some extent, do you feel that investment in the United States is underappreciated? I hope not. I hope not and underappreciated. For us in KIA, we have been welcomed any time. So I, I don't think it has been uh, not appreciated, but um, uh, I see a lot of uh, unfair backlash came about the Sovereign Wealth Fund and everybody bundled together. This is, this is, this is our worry. Uh, but I, I think so far it's, it's, it's okay. Have you made decisions, investment decisions in the past year or so? As a result of that backlash, have you decided to move your money other places as a result? No. No. Um, Do my ports in that situation did not convince you to reassess investment here? Uh, uh, no, not, not really. Not really. And matter of fact, uh, we...
increased our allocation recently. We, we thought that this crisis ha has created opportunity and um, we injected, we increased our allocation to the United States. And that was done within the, this year? Yes. When we come back, we'll continue our exclusive conversation. We'll hear more from Badr al Saad, where the fund is investing right now, whether he's satisfied with his multi-billion dollar investments in Citigroup and Merrill Lynch. His comments there helping move those stocks today. And we'll get reaction from a top Republican lawmaker who's been a major critic of sovereign wealth funds in the U.S., California Congressman Duncan Hunter. That's still ahead here on Money in Politics. Bloomberg's Money and Politics is brought to you by BP, who believe it's time to go beyond. The sun is there. I mean, there's an endless supply of it. Let's start working on solar power. That would be huge. Solar, I think... What happened to solar? Even though we don't get a lot of sunlight here, we actually get enough to, you know, power your home. It makes so much sense to me to harness that and use that to produce electricity than some of the other ways that we produce electricity in this country. I want to stand on principle. Speculation. First page of the book. Or a little bolder. Variable rate. India is a very attractive market. Classic growth phase. The value chain is exciting. The ebbs and flows in our share price. Yeah, that's the most important thing. 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 If I were to offer you fifty thousand dollars in cash, or fifty thousand dollars in gold, and you couldn't cash it in for five years, which would you choose? This free special report gives five compelling reasons why you should choose gold. In fact, once you read this exclusive report from Monex, you'll understand why more and more investors choose gold for both wealth protection and profit potential, and have as much as 20% or more of their assets in gold. So call Monex now at 1-800-449-2727 for your free report. And you'll also receive this free gold investors kit which will show you the many ways you can own gold. So call Monex now at 1-800-449-2727. Get the facts on gold. Call Monex at 1-800-449-2727. 1-800-449-2727. Monex, America's trusted name in precious metals for 40 years. We know why we're here. To design the future of flight inside and out. To build tomorrow's technology in amazing ways and reshape the science of aerospace forever. Around the globe, the people of Boeing are working together for the dreams of generations to come. That's why we're here. Today's ticker is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. More now from my exclusive interview with Badr al Saad, Managing Director of the Kuwait Investment Authority, the world's oldest sovereign wealth fund. We spoke earlier today and I asked what he thinks of the global economy right now, where he sees opportunities for investments. Two years ago, three years ago, um, we increased our allocation toward the emerging market because we thought that there is economy whereby growing 8-10% and there is economy growing to 2-3%. So why to be in 2-3 and there is economy growing? So we increase our allocation toward the uh, emerging market. Uh, since the last year, the, the, I would say uh, uh, the adjustment of the valuation in the markets in the U.S. and the Euro, we think that has created a lot of opportunity, especially in the financials, in the real estate, and in other sectors which has been by default followed what happened in the financial market. So I th now I would say there is a temporary shift toward the U.S. and, and to Europe. Are you worried about recession in the United States? Yes. Yes. I, I, th I think this is a serious issue. The credit market is a serious issue. 
Um, but it's also a buying opportunity. It is a buying opportunity, but the problem is uh, it will take longer than everybody expect. We thought last year in August, September, this, this is a six months uh, problem, and we think that uh, um, the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Treasury, will, will come up with, with, with some uh, restoring confidence to the market. But I think the issue is, is bigger than that. And I don't believe that there will be a decoupling. The problem that, uh, yes, probably China and India will not fall into a recession, but the, 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 the growth will, will, will slow. Yeah, we know that you invested three billion dollars in uh, in Citigroup, two billion dollars in Merrill Lynch earlier this year. Uh, so you're obviously uh, counting on some of those financial institutions to to perform over the long term. Are you satisfied with those investments? Where those companies stand right now? Yeah, yeah, I, I think we have um, we have a confidence in the management of these institutions, and uh, we um, have a confidence in the reform that they are uh, they are doing and the cleaning that they are doing in their balance sheet. So um, we, we, we need the other part, which is the macro picture to be, uh, you know, to, to be, uh, uh, I think the other, the other picture is the, the macro, the, the economy, which is the, the, we need to restore the confidence in the, in the consumer and the investor to buy, uh, to go back to, into the market and the consumer to spend. So this is, this is. Could you add to those positions? Uh, Yes, if we feel that there is opportunity, yes. And can you tell us if you have in the interim period since you made those investments back in January? Um, no, not 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 in the not in the yeah. nothing in the in the in the in the short term. What about? Uh, let me ask you about some of the other investments that again we, we are aware of. You, you mentioned Daimler. You've been a long time investor in in Daimler. Yeah. Also, uh, BP. Can you give me your thoughts on those two companies and where they stand? Well. Um, uh, BB, it has been a great company. And Daimler-Benz, uh, we are quite satisfied with, with, with the recent management. Uh, the company went into trouble when they merged with Chrysler, but I think now they are in the right direction. The past two years, I think the management has uh, a focused strategy that we are satisfied with and will continue to be a shareholder in Daimler. And you mentioned that you are looking here in the United States right now for more investment opportunities. Yeah. Where else are you looking around the world? Um, I think Asia will, will continue to be attractive. Uh, Vietnam will be more attractive than the others. China, India will continue to be attractive destination for, for our investment. I think also some, some regions in the, in, the, in the Middle East, Turkey, Morocco probably, Egypt. Uh, Is it safe for us to assume these are places where you actually have put money recently? Yes. Yeah. Substantial money? Uh, let me give an example of Turkey. Uh, Turkey, we have, we have invested something like uh, uh, 1.7 to 2 billion in less than a year, which is substantial for emerging market like Turkey. But we have been doing quite well in Turkey. United States, can you put in dollar terms how much money or some sense how much money you're looking to invest in the United States going forward? I don't know. It depends about the opportunities. Uh, uh, a month ago, we have invested um, in um, we bought small stake, five percent stake in a real estate company. Uh, we'll continue to look into some stakes and some of the private equities uh, and we'll continue to look into uh, direct real estate investment uh, but a matter of absolute number I, 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 I don't know really I, there is there is it depends about the opportunity there isn't specific amount it has to be allocated during certain period it all depends about the opportunities and let me just ask you finally, uh, again, as you come here to Washington, you hear the concerns about sovereign wealth funds going forward. You feel optimistic that there can be a, a, a happy middle ground between recipient nations and sovereign wealth funds uh, going forward. This is not going to cause tension, problems over time? Uh, I think we are used to. I mean, I mean, if you look to the late 70s, 80s, it has been an issue here, the Japanese money. We, we are used to this, so I think we will come over this. The, the thing that the fear is exaggerated. I think the size, they, they talk about the size. Yes, the size is growing, but the economy is growing also. Look to the GDP five years ago and now. So, yes, the size of the sovereign wealth is growing, but the market is also uh, growing. So I, I don't think this, is, this is, will be an issue uh, a few months later. I don't think so. 
Kuwait Investment Authority Managing Director Badr Al Saad. Coming up, we'll show you how his comments helped boost Citigroup and Merrill Lynch today and help move the entire equity markets. But first, reaction to some of what we just heard from one lawmaker in Congress who says that uh, Washington needs to do more to restrict sovereign wealth investment in the United States. Congressman Duncan Hunter joins us after this short break.